All right, moving on to the next section in the Preferences menu. Hopefully you've made the changes that I have here so we can click on Locations. And when we do, it's gonna ask us, you have made changes to the setup. Do you want to apply the changes? Yes. You could also have clicked Apply down here. Maybe you did that. Here in Locations, this is where we set locations for where various files are. Now this is the most important one, user data. User data includes your songs, your projects, your presets. So for most people, they're gonna be able to leave it on the default, which is in their documents and the Studio One folder. For myself, as I mentioned before, I have it on an external hard drive. So if you're doing that as well, I'm gonna go in here and navigate to my external hard drive and click on my Studio One folder there, and I'm gonna set that as my user data location. Below that, we have an auto save documents feature. This is gonna automatically save your sessions for you as kind of a backup security measure in case you forget and something crashes. And you can set how often this saves. Personally, I like to save it every two minutes. And that way I don't go too long without um, some changes being saved. The only downside of putting it shorter is that it takes up more disk space on your hard drive because uh, it's saving more documents. But I'm willing to sacrifice that bit of disk space to have more security with my file saving. So ask to copy external files when saving a song. If you've brought in audio files that are from outside the session, so you say you've got a sample or a song that you've imported into your song and you've used it, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna copy those into the session or do you want to have it just be somewhere else on your computer where you download it from and it's going to link to that file? Personally, I like to copy it in because then I know everything is in one location and that is easiest for me if I need to give the session to somebody else or if I delete something by accident, I know it's all together in one spot. So I'm going to set that to on. Moving over, we're going to file types. We don't really need to worry about this, but this is all the kinds of files that can be imported into um, Studio One and the kinds of files that show up in the browser, which is over here that we're gonna look at uh, in a future video. Sound sets. This is setting a location of where you're gonna keep your sound sets. So your sound sets are basically where all the instruments that come bundled with Studio One are stored in. They're stored in sound sets. And if you followed the installation instructions, you probably downloaded a huge amount of sound sets, like something like 30 gigabytes worth of sounds and loops and things like that. And that got installed to whatever location was set to, it was set to install here, which is the default location, which is great. Um, so you don't need to worry about that unless you're using an external hard drive like myself, then you would set this to be on your external drive and you could also set in here multiple locations where you have sound sets stored. For most people, don't worry about it. You just leave this where it is. But if you have other locations where you've um, put sound sets, you could add those to this list and then Studio One will find them there as well. So this is the same with the instrument library um, stored as sound fonts. So there's a Studio One, in your Studio One folder in Documents, there's a Sound Fonts folder. Again, this is just default location. I would just leave it like that, nothing to worry about. VST plugins. Now, this is an interesting thing that we're gonna talk about um, in the future, but just as a brief overview, these are third-party, meaning not made by Personas. These are plugins that are made by other people or other companies that you can load in to Studio One. And the more advanced you get as a music producer on the computer, the more you're going to start using these third-party VST plugins because you can do a whole lot of things and make a whole lot of sounds and all sorts of cool stuff that you can't do with the basic things that come with Studio One. Though the plugins that come with Studio One are awesome, um, there's even more awesome plugins out there that people spend a long time working on. And these are people who don't have to split their time between making a whole application like Studio One and making plugins. All they do is make plugins so they can make something really cool. And yeah, we'll look at that in the future as well. So that's it for locations. See you in the next one.